here on tonight. We decree and declare. Uh, we decree and declare the will of God on tonight. Uh, that God's will will be done in this place. Uh, that God's mercy uh, will meet us here. Uh, that His grace uh, will meet us here. Uh, God, we need your mercy. Uh, God, we need your grace. Uh, because we're calling on a name that we don't even deserve to be able to call. Uh, we're calling on you, Jesus. Uh, God, we thank you, Lord. Uh,
eyes are really with him. He's going to do his will. Why do you keep saying that, Minister? Why, 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 why do you keep saying that? Because I need you to know that his will, hear me, his will is what he promises he'll do. His will, watch this, his will is unchangeable. You can't change his will. Y'all got to hear me. I'm already teaching and, I, and I'm trying not to read my notes yet, like in my mind. But he's going to do his will. Somebody say his will. His will. Yeah. I need you to get that because we're going to pray once again because uh, uh, if the Holy Spirit says the same, I'm looking to leave here at 8 So I need you to keep me with my time. But now I said if, if the Holy Spirit says the same. Okay. But we can go to seven. But his will. Your will. His 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 will. He, okay, y'all, I know it. And listen, just, just go with me for a second. I need you to understand that he's going to do his will. Amen. Why do you say that? Why, 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 why is that such a point of emphasis? Because what I need, what we need to understand, saints, is that a lot of, oh God, okay, let, let, let's, let, let's just go ahead and get into it. There are certain things that we've prayed for that has not come to pass simply because it's not his will. It's quiet. It's not his will. So we can't say, we cannot go as far as to say that, oh, I feel like I was lied to. I feel like I was betrayed. No, 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 no. What Oh God. Okay, here's how I heard it. You ready? Whenever we pray on this, whenever we ask God to do something that's not His will, what we're actually unintentionally asking Him to do is for Him to step outside of His Father's will. Y'all didn't hear. Y'all, y'all didn't hear the weight of that. Y'all didn't hear the weight of that. You did not hear the weight of that. Amen. He said in His Word. He said. Uh, 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 he said that the only reason he says the reason I do what I do, I'm paraphrasing, but he let it, but he's already let us know. He says the reason that I even when he was in the flesh before he uh, went back to heaven, he let the disciples know the only reason I'm able to do what I do, and better yet, the only way you're going to be able to do what you do when I leave is because I go to my Father. Amen. Okay, let me even take you back to here. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane. And we're going to go to the book of Acts tonight. Don't worry. But remember in the Garden of Gethsemane. Think about what he said before the process of going to Calvary started. What he said was, uh, not my will, but your, your will. I need y'all to really catch that before we get into this tonight. He's going to do his will. Okay, let me say it like this and really hope you catch it, okay? If, okay, we, 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 we already know Jesus did not want to go to the cross. Amen. Talk to the good saints. We know he did not want to go to the cross. That was very evident. Somebody said that was evident. Yeah, that was very evident he did not want to go to the cross. But at the same time, something, I, I, I would like to suggest, I would like to suggest that going to the cross, watch this, and this is just what I would like to suggest. I would like to suggest that Jesus going to the cross was his hardest yes ever. Not, 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 that, that's just my view on it. Jesus' hardest yes. Or in other words, we say it like this. Uh, Jesus' hardest submission to his father's will 
was actually in his going to the cross. So, what's the big point here? I'll tell you. If he said yes to the cross, which was not what he wanted to do, but it was his father's will, what makes us think that we can derail him from his father's will when we say, God, I, 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 want, I want a car in my yard, a brand new car in my yard by this time tomorrow. But he's like, no, 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 that's not my will. My will is for you to build your credit back up first. Because you credit to the 200s. In other words, what I'm saying is, you cannot pray past principle. Look at somebody and tell them, we cannot pray past principle. Amen. You cannot pray past principle. In order for us to know what to pray for, how to pray, I'm just kind of opening this up. But the only way for us to know what to pray, how to pray, is that we must first know what the Father's will is. What is His will? When we pray His will, then our prayers will be answered. Hallelujah. Prayers without His will are void or have the potential to be void. Prayers without His will have the potential to be void. Amen. So let's get into this tonight. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. We're going to do a little teaching tonight and we're going to, we're going to end in prayer. All right, and, or better yet, we're just going to teach and we're going to see what the Holy Ghost say. Amen. I'm not even about to try to make this thing. we just going to, hallelujah. But I feel the, I feel, I feel the anointing of teaching. Amen. Amen. So, again, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, uh, and we're going to start at verse 1. Amen. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The Holy Spirit really showed me something here. And we're not going to read. We, 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 we're not going to do a lot of reading, but, or at least that's not what I have planned. Do you hear my verbiage? That's not what I have planned, but whatever His will is. Because I'm, I'm making a very valid point here. I like that Whatever his will is. Yeah, yeah. This is why, oh God, good God. Uh, see, 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 see. This is why people who really understand the importance of knowing his will and walking in his will and talking his will and thinking his will. Yeah, you got to do all that. Because people who do their best to live that kind of life uh, you gonna be at the house tomorrow, Lord's willing. Amen. Whatever His will is. Yeah. Oh, now let me give you scripture to back up why He said because the Bible says to put no thought for tomorrow. Amen. Think about what I said earlier. That's right. The Holy Spirit gave me that. You cannot pray past principle. Amen. So why is it that I'm going to try and say this is what's going to happen? Now it's one thing to plan. I'm not against planning. The Bible says to, to write the vision to make it plain. Amen, that's right. So there are some things that uh, 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 that you got to write those things out so they can be remembered. Yes. Amen. Yes. But yeah, I'll say it like this, and this goes back on another point I'm going to make it about maybe five minutes, and that's this. Uh, the, the only way that, they, that even in the Bible days, the only way that they were able to know when a prophecy was fulfilled, you better teach for it, is that they had to write it down before time. Yeah. It had to be recorded. Yeah, Why? Because my petitions to God need to be written down. Yes. So when they come to pass, I can recall it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There are certain things that we pray for, for God we pray for, and didn't see it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So let's get into this. 1 
first of all, I want to I want to release something prophetic, and that's this: the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit revealed to me, uh, I would say maybe about maybe about a month ago, that this is the time, and I want you to understand what I'm doing. What I'm doing is, and this is how the Holy Spirit led me to go about tonight. He's given me his word. He gave me his word for what we are to do or what's to come so that we can now know how to pray. Amen. You see that? Yeah. And the thing is, is that, again, notice how I started out. I said about a month ago, the Holy Spirit revealed this to me. So that means that there was some kind of reporting. Mm -hmm. Amen. There was some kind of recording. So I wrote down, I wrote this down is what I'm saying. Okay. Right. I, in other words, what I'm doing is I'm giving you some nuggets to understand that this is what needs to be done in this hour. We ought to pray, but we also need to be to the point of where we're taking some notes down. Amen. We're writing down what the Holy Spirit revealed to us. What is he saying? There are some times where we'll be going about, you know, whatever, going to store or work or whatever, and the Holy Spirit will give you something. He'll give you a certain statement or a scripture or whatever to ponder on. Yeah. And we got to write these things down. So we can know, God, what's the purpose of why you showed this to me? Why, why, why did you show this to me? Why did you give this to me? I need to know your purpose. In other words, I need to know your will. So watch this in your will. Even when you get something from God, find out what his will is for it. Amen. Hallelujah. So, but, but the Holy Spirit, he told me this. He said, this is the time of teaching and evangelism. Amen. Right. He said, this is the time of teaching and evangelism. And these are two areas that we're going to pray in tonight. The Holy Spirit showed me that this is the time of teaching and evangelism. In other words, I got many different uh, 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 scriptures or whatnot. One that just came to me by the Holy Spirit to mention, to back up my point, and that's this. Even in the book of Revelation, it talks about two witnesses. It talks about two witnesses. In other words, uh, even when we read, we're getting ready to read the text, we're getting ready to read the text. But the thing is, is that after, after, somebody said after. After, after. after the Holy Spirit, oh, I don't want to jump there yet. But after the Holy Spirit was given, did you hear what I said earlier? When something is given to you. You must now ask God what is his purpose for what he gave you. Watch this. When the Holy Spirit was given, they knew, they knew that now that we got this Holy Ghost, now we need to find out what does he want us to do with it. What is the purpose of the Holy Ghost? I want you to think about that for a second. What is the purpose of the Holy Ghost? Why, why, why do we need it? All right, we need it. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 we, 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 we must understand that we, we must have the Holy Ghost because of what is the original intent for us having it was to be for. Yes, it's a comforter. Yes, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. Yes, the Holy Spirit uh, shows us what's going on as far as having discernment. Yes, the Holy Spirit, uh, with the Holy Spirit, we have power. But the question is, power to do what? To simply, to simply put, to spread the word of God. To spread the love of God. To spread, to spread his will. Watch this. To spread his word and to spread, and to spread his will could almost fall hand in hand. Because watch this and hear my next point. How 
ain't going to know his will if you don't know his word. Look at somebody and tell them his word is his will. And he will fulfill his word. Amen. So, so this is the time of teaching and evangelism. The Holy Spirit revealed to me, even just now as I was teaching, he reminded me of the scripture that talks about the two witnesses that will come. Now, many scholars, theologians, or whatnot have their uh, choices or their, their, through their research, who they believe those witnesses will be. But the point I want us to stick to is witness. Witness. What do you mean witness? Uh, this is why back in the day they would say, they would say, uh, uh, I want to be a good witness. I want to be a witness for God. In other words, what that what that truly means is you want to uh, 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 share the goodness of God. Now, watch this. We are living in a day where the world needs answers. Somebody say answers. The world wants to know the answers to their questions. And even as we get ready to read, there was a question that even the disciples asked. There was a question that was asked in the book of Acts. There was a question that was asked. These are our concerns. What's, what, what, uh, are you guys, you say that you, uh, can hear from God and whatnot. Well, what is God saying about, why did my child die? Why did this and that and the third go on? Why is all this going on in, 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 in Russia and Ukraine? Why all this stuff going on? What should we look forward to? What is the answer to how all this stuff can be, uh, 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 you know, more tolerable? Why did I say more tolerable and not done away with? See, see, we got to really understand. We can't pray His will away. These things must come to pass. So this is why, even in the understanding of what the answer is, there has to be teaching. In other words, when you witness to them, you better have some word on the inside. You better have his will on the inside. Because his word is his will, and he will fulfill his word. You got to have word on the inside so that you can know, so you can rightly divide the word of truth. This is the assignment with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say that is the assignment of us having the Holy Ghost. Can you clap your hands right there? That was that there. Hallelujah. That is the assignment. Amen. So again, the Holy Spirit had to let me know this is the time of teaching and evangelism. Now, I, I, when I say that, I don't mean that the, the other gifts or whatnot aren't needed. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is uh, that these are the two gifts that will be very much seen. You're going to see these two gifts very heavily in operation in this day and time. You're going to see these two gifts, teaching and evangelism. You're going to see that very heavy into the end of time. I said until the end of time. I will say this next thing and we'll move it on, and that is even in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the only book in the Bible that's not, that does not have an introduction nor a conclusion. Which means that uh, the book of Acts, we are still technically living in that day. This is Acts being fulfilled. What we are seeing now, the days of Acts have never stopped. 
Look at somebody and tell them we're in the days of Acts. Yes. That the, the, the acts has never stopped. Acts is still happening. We're still seeing those signs, those wonders. We're still at this, in other words, acts is our instructions. Catch the wordplay. Acts. Act, an act is what you do. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that. I didn't even study that. An act is an action. It's what you do. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah. See, 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 we gonna continue to pray. See, we're gonna continue to pray. But there's no need of praying and not knowing what we need to pray for and how to pray. We got to we got to be in the way. We can't just be praying, God, I need you to send me this. Lord, I need you to do this for me. I need you to do that for me. God, God, let 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 you pray and win. What if that's not his will? Uh-oh, it's quiet. What if that's not his will? Lord, now I don't want it either. But some may say, well, Lord, don't let America get involved. What if that's not his will? I I'm just talking. I'm just talking about what we're talking about because this is the main, this is one of the main areas of what we talk about today. So here is 
what the Greek explains that prayer is. What is prayer? Prayer refers to urgent requests or supplications to meet a need and are exclusively addressed to God. I need you to hear it again. It says prayer. Somebody say prayer. Prayer, prayer refers to urgent requests. It means to ask. Prayer refers to urgent requests or supplications to meet a need. Not a want is why. Not a want, but a need. A, it is refers to urgent requests or supplications to meet a need and are exclusively addressed to God. It's, a, it's exclusively addressed to God. In other words, there's no confusion. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He, what, what, what the Holy Spirit just did was he reminded me of whenever I, whenever, because uh, uh, I work at the UPS store. And whenever, whew, that's so good. See, it's one thing to make a label and address it to go somewhere. But if I want to make sure that when it get there, it gets to a certain person, I'm going to make sure I put it on the attention line who it directly needs to go to. In other words, when we pray, when we pray, our prayers are going exclusively to God. It's exclusively addressed to God. So watch this. The Holy Spirit had to let me know. He said prayer is what you ask. Prayer is you, you're asking for something. You're asking according to a need. Now watch this. How do we know what we truly need? Unless we know what God has to say about our needs. Watch this. He said, I shall, uh, 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 he said, I shall provide all your needs according. He said, I, can you find us according? He said, I, no, thank you, friend. He said, I shall supply. I shall supply. Here again, here's the definition. Refers to urgent requests or supplications to meet a need. He said, I shall supply all your needs according to my riches in glory. So watch this. Listen to this. He said, I shall supply. Which means I already know what you need because I said I'm going to supply it. Watch this. Before you were ever born, before you came in this world, he said, I will. So that means that before you ever, before you ever realized there was a need, he already said, I will. So all you got to do is pray that his will be done. You see? Now watch this. Prayer is a request. So you know what? And I taught it wrong. Let me go in and say it. I taught it wrong. I would always say that prayer, many of us have said it, that prayer is communication with God. It's not. Prayer is not communication with God. Prayer is a petition to God. In other words, if I send a letter, if I send a letter, I can put whatever I need you to hear it. I need you to hear it. When I, if I send somebody a letter, in that letter, I have plenty of room to say everything I want to say on a, watch this, uninterrupted. When I send a letter, a letter is sent. God, and listen, I pray that y'all share this. The, the, the Holy Spirit is really opening my teaching up tonight. A, 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 a little bit of what I'm saying tonight has not been said. 
When you pray, when you're praying, you need to pray that his will be done. But you're also praying that a need be fulfilled. He said, I shall supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. But how can we know what we need unless we know his will? He says that I'm going to supply all your needs. I already know what you need before you need it. So all you need to do is pray that my will be done. That, that, that's, that's all you need to do. We have said for so long that prayer is communication with God. No, it's not. A conversation is communication. But prayer is a letter to God. In other words, prayer, prayer is literally, prayer is literally a letter. Uh, what is a letter? Obtain. I, I got to bring it all the way down because we got to understand it now. Prayer includes an introduction by the Holy I feel the Holy Ghost doing like this to, in, to me in the spirit. He pushed me. Prayer is literally a letter. What does a letter in, include? An introduction, body, and conclusion. What is a good example of prayer? I'm glad you asked. The model prayer. A lot of us have said that that was Jesus' prayer. That wasn't his prayer. Jesus' prayer was in Gethsemane. We got to teach it right. So I uh, thank you, thank you, Compassion. We used to say that the Lord's that, that the Lord's prayer, no, that wasn't the Lord's prayer, but he said, Our Father. No, 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 no. He was teaching them that wasn't the Lord's prayer. He was teaching them how to pray. That was a letter. Watch this. Watch this. Hear the letter. Now we got to hear it. You ready? It's a letter. Our Father. In other words, dear so and so. You get our Father is a thank you. It's addressed to Him. Yes. Our Father, yes. which are in heaven. So guess what? I just put the address on the letter where it need to go yes. to heaven. I, I need to make it clear who this is going to. It's exclusively addressed to God. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. In other words, before I even get to ask you anything, let me greet you properly. We gotta move on. This is good. 
refers to urgent requests and supplications to meet a need and exclusively addressed to God. So in other words, the Holy Spirit told me this statement, and that's what it is. Stop confusing prayer with communication. You having a one-on-one -on -one talk with God is not prayer. That's biblically not considered prayer. That is a conversation. Prayer is prayer is your personal letter to God. But when you pick up the phone and you now there's a dialogue. Now it's a conversation. Now we I'm I'm listening to you, you're listening to me. Now watch this and hear it from Sunday on. Now we're having communion. Communication. Communion and prayer are not the same thing. It's not. Which simply means what do you do more of? Praying or talking or communicating, I mean to say. What do we do more of? Because many of us say, oh, I, I, prayed, I prayed to God today. No, y'all, you and God had a conversation. Hello. So, and, 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 and that may seem basic to some, but we really must understand that. We, we, we will sit there and talk with God all day. No, you did not pray. So now it goes as far to say, when's the last time you honestly prayed? Now that you really know what it is now. Uh -huh. When's the last time you prayed? When's the last time I prayed? I put myself on the witness stand. When we were talking about being a witness, but we were going to be on the witness stand. No accountability. Yet you want to be a witness. Can I get a witness? In other words, the only way God can do anything on the earth 
is that man has to be involved. Amen. So God ain't going to just do anything on the earth and we not know. Amen. So in other words, when we ask him, what we're doing is we're giving, when we ask him, well, in other words, what we're doing is we're coming in contact with what he's already going to do. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you ask, your ask is, in other words, coming in agreement with what he's already done. He says, I'm the author and finisher of your faith. Jesus, let me have you understand something. Jesus is not doing anything right now, but praying. That's all Jesus is doing right now. He's already done everything that he's going to do. He's already returned to heaven. He's on the right hand of the Father. Amen. It's already done. So when we ask him, we're asking him to do what he's already set in motion to do. It's already, look at some of that so prophet. Look at some of that telling them it's already in motion. It's already in motion. It's alright. See, if it was Sunday, we, we, we definitely have been in time to, to, to get up on our feet and dance right there. It's already in motion. He said, I'll, can you give it to me? Matthew 18, 19. What does it say? Again, I'll say unto you. Uh-huh. On where? On earth. Give me a mic. Give me that one. Now I know I kind of put you in the scripture earlier, but, but, but I'm glad we stayed off the technology when we get it right. Uh, Matthew what? Matthew 18, 19. Matthew 18, 19. What does it say? Again, I say unto you uh -huh. that in two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. It shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. It shall be done for them of what? It shall be done for them. For them of my of. Father which is in heaven. So we can't even come in agreement unless what we're asking for and what he's already done has been approved by the Father. Amen. You see how all this is connected? Pastor Michelle. Was talking, I was just reminded of, um, I believe it was the man, and I can't, don't want to butcher the scripture, I can find it, but I know it's in the word of God, even with the, the young man that Jesus asked him, what is it that you want me to do for you? And it's, I believe that's the one, um, he said, what will you have me to do for you? Mm -hmm. He said, will thou be made whole, or what have you? So he's asking permission, because one thing I'm, I see that God will not allow it to happen is look, the work can't be done unless we participate. So right. this is why he asked him, what shall I do for you? What is it that you want me to do for you? He said, that I may see. Wow, well, it was already done, but we also have to want what his will is. That's right. He's not going to force. Matter of fact, actually, I'll say it like this. Now, it was already done, but again, like I said earlier, the Father loves to hear us still ask. Because our ask is active participation in his will. Amen. So, in other words, what that scripture, I thank God for that scripture because it backs up that it, it was already done. His, him getting his sight was already done. But the thing is, he still had to agree with man Amen. before he did what he wanted. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Amen. Or did you hear what the Holy Spirit had to say? Sure, yeah. He had to come in agreement with man Amen. in order for it to come into manifestation. Yes. Amen. So watch this. Instead of us trying to figure out what's going on and well, God, when you gonna do this, when you gonna do that, when, listen, that's a whole bunch of conversation. Amen. I didn't have to listen. Conversation is good. I'm not going against conversation because there is importance in conversation. If there was not total importance in conversation, if, if there was no importance in conversation or communication, there would never be communion. So there is importance in it. But we need to understand that this is the time to truly pray. We've said that as a church for a long time. Oh, but every time we get back, oh, this is the time to pray. It's showing up for time to pray. This is the time to pray. Oh, 
Are we praying for real? Or are we just having conversations with God? Come on. Amen. Go past Okay. Um, so thank God. Amen. So as, as the Bible says, no, as, as we come into knowledge, as we know, then it's better to do it. Now, how many times I mean, we, we have done it. We have before we even start the service, we come in and petition God. If we're able two or three here in the morning, we, we first should be able to petition God that somebody's soul will be saved. Yeah. Amen. You touch it in the God said, if there's two, at least two or three, that is His will. That's right. Of touching and agreeance for. Somebody to get saved. Amen. Or God send those in that's hungry for Jesus. Yes. You see what I'm saying? We petition it to God. And He's going to be in the midst because that is will that none should perish, but whether they come to repentance. Amen. You see, and if you see Jesus Christ, that's what Acts is all about repentance. And, and, uh, so if we know that God's will, we ought to be hungry for the will of God to be done. Amen. 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 We're being attacked on every side. And so many, say, so many divisions in churches now simply because we don't follow the pattern. Amen. Like you say, division. If we don't follow the vision, we're going to perish. Yes. Amen. That's yeah, true. Like you can do more by yourself. Thank you. That's true. We got to get to the point where we actually pray. Amen. We must get to the point to where we are actually praying. Amen. I mean, actually praying, Amen. not talking, that's not trying to make a deal. Yes. No, we're not trying to make a covenant with God. There is, there's making a covenant with God, but making a covenant is not prayer because a covenant is a contract. A contract, in order for a contract to be written, there must be negotiation. There can be no negotiation without communication. Amen. 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 Even when you say it, thank you, Holy Ghost. This is why God can't do anything in the earth unless it comes in agreement with man. Amen. So this is why whenever we're finished praying, we say, Amen. amen. Because amen means I agree. Yes. In other words, when we pray, in other words, here's what, happen, here's what happens. When we pray, God's will comes in contact with we agree. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. We can end tonight right there. When we pray, God's I will come in contact with our we agree. Man, listen. If I was on, if the, if the Holy Ghost would allow me to say that on the road, I would have danced right there. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. So, 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 so here it is. Here it is. He says. There are many different scriptures to back up what we've said before. Yes. Our we agree comes in contact with his I will. Yes. So there's no need of us praying outside of his will because his will is perfect. There's no need of us praying, okay, well, God, I know you have a will for me, but can you also do listen? He says, I shall do exceedingly abundantly. Amen. That's his will. Whenever God says, I'll do something, in other words, he's saying, that's my will. Watch this. Even when it comes to the thought of, okay, well, God, I know you got a will for me, but could you also do this? Well, guess what? He said, I will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask for a thing. So you ain't even got to think outside of my will. I've already done that for you. Exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. He says, My thoughts are not your thoughts. So, in other words, there's no need, there's no, there's no need to think. There, there's no 
wrong thinking involved when it comes to prayer. When you pray, all you're doing is reminding him of his word. Because his word is his will. And he will fulfill his word. Amen. Amen. So, 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 the Bible even also says there is a way that seems right. Did you have something? Okay. Uh, he said there's a way that seems right, but the end thereof is death. So, even if we say, okay, well, God, I know your will, but or in other words, I know that this is the way you want to go about it, but I mean, I, I would love to go this way. Well, your way leads to death. He said that I can't reach my half life. So that means that sounds like a way that's already been prepared. Just like he's told me, every last one of the disciples, just follow. Pastor said. chapter 5 um, is where it was coming from, verse number 8. Jesus said unto him, rise, take up thy bed, and walk. The man was 38 years in the state that he was in. And then when Jesus came along, he made excuses. Well, people got ahead of me. Well, I can't, I've been coming and I ain't been able to get in. Well, this happened, that happened. Jesus said, okay. Because again, on earth, as it is in heaven. Do we agree as Minister Jonathan was saying? Mm -hmm. Now our agreeance is amen. Our uh, agreeance is obedience to what he says do. And anytime his will is involved, so will direction also. So to say the first thing that just happened was Jesus said to him rise, take up thy bed and walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now he could have laid there and said well God I believe I believe I believe. But in the very next verse and immediately the man so now he was obedient unto the instructions. And so I dare say uh, that when God's will is in order, so is his word, and then obedience to that word. So then he had to be obedient to what God said, and as he got up, and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. How would he have known if the will was his word? Because he followed direction. Think about it like when you say it reminded me of certain of uh, as as many would say that these people that I'm about to mention that they are the generals. They're the generals that kind of you know pave the way and led the way. And in a, in a way they, they are. Certain ones like A.A. A. Allen, like R. W. Schimbach, like Bishop Charles Blake. No, Bishop Charles Blake. Uh, Bishop John G. Lake. John G. Lake. Bishop Charles Lake. I'm thinking about the former presiding Bishop of Koji. But, uh, 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 even certain ones like Catherine Coleman. These were certain ones, and even one that a lot of people, a lot of people know all the word, and that was even our late founder, Apostle Johnny Washington. These were certain ones that God used to perform many, and I watched my Bible word it, wonderful acts. But a lot of times in those acts, a question would be asked. They were asked one question. Do you believe? Do you believe that God can do this? Do you believe that you can get out of that wheelchair? Do you hide down a little shy? Do you believe that you can get off those crutches that you can get off that medication? Do you believe? Because there's no need of us going any further if you do not believe. He says, miracles, signs, wonders shall follow those that Will you believe? Why did he say he don't need to? We don't want to need to believe. He don't need to believe. There's no need to believe with Jesus right there. Just obey him. He is to believe. I'll even say this. In a lot of instances when Jesus did do a thing, he didn't have to ask if they believed because he already knew. Yeah. I'm going to start saying that. Because he's the beginning of the year. First and the last. 
He knows all. He is. He is God. Amen. So, 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 how do we pray for something God wants without being familiar with His Word? Like I said earlier, my, listen, here, here is the one thing, here is the scripture to guarantee that He's going to fulfill His Word. God is, He is the man of His Word. Because we've used that saying for a long time. Oh, well, this person, so and so, they're a man of their word. This is that the third. God is the man. He's the original man of his word. Because the Bible says this that his word shall not return to him void. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In other words, when he says it, when, when he wants to see manifestation, or in other words, in other words, when he said it, he, the manifestation automatically showed up. Ooh. When he said it, manifestation was already there. Okay, let me say this, and I'll really open up, you, open you up to what I'm saying. In the beginning, Let there be. Amen. And there was. He spoke it and manifestation manifestation met. I'm not trying to go that deep tonight. I, I know I was about to, I, <laughs> I'm not going that deep tonight. Let's go ahead to Acts chapter 1. I'm going to move quickly. It's 849. Let's try to be done with this by 9. And we're going to close out of prayer. So Acts chapter 1 verse Acts chapter 1 verse 1 It says The former treaties have I The, the former treaties have I made All Theophilus Of all that Jesus began to do To both I mean Sorry All that Jesus began both and teach. Right. And teach. You see why the Holy Spirit had me, had, had me open up like that? And teach. To do and teach. Amen. To do and teach. To teach and evangelize. So there's no need to just evangelize. And to not teach. But this, this is going, all this is going back up. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get to 14 and we're done. Uh, verse 2 says, Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Verse 3 To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. By many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So, in other words, there were many things that Jesus both taught. This is showing us. This is this is a testimony of what Jesus did before he went back up because even if you remember in some of our uh, Sunday school teachings we talked about how Jesus died and once he died he was resurrected and then he was on the earth for 40 more days this is an account of after those 40 days or this is an account of those 40 days he said in verse 3 to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled, being and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Verse 5, 
for John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. This is a promise. This is a letter. First of all, this is this is a understanding. This is an understanding, uh, uh, or this is a presentation of what has been known. And this is an understanding of okay, this is what we need to do now because we wrote because we recorded it. Do you remember what I said earlier about recording things? There was a reason why I said that. Because why are going to get to this point tonight? These things were recorded so that when it come to pass, now we can thank him for what he's already done. Now we see the manifestation. Or now in this text you're getting ready to see it. So, uh, verse 5 from John, no, verse 6. When they therefore will come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? This was a question that was asked to Jesus. This was a question that was asked to Jesus. They asked him, are you going to restore Israel? There's many different read there, there, there's a lot that I can say there, but the but the main thing that I do want to say is this was at that time an area of concern for them. This was an area of concern. Israel is needed to be restored. Let me say it like this. Even to this day, right now, we ought to pray for Israel. Yes, we need to pray for Ukraine and Russia. But there's scripture that specifically tells us to pray for Israel. In this conversation, or excuse me, in this text, this was a concern. So watch this and hear it. The same way that Russia and Ukraine is a concern. Israel was a concern. And now this is his response. And he said unto them, verse 7, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Wait! I know that you care about this, but I don't need you to get to the point of and hear it now. I don't need you to be, I don't, in other words, if you want to know what you can do towards this situation, I don't need you to have a conversation. Because in communication, there is questions and answers. Did you hear it? And what did they just do? They asked a what? A question. Jesus let them know. He said, I don't need you to ask questions right now. I, I pray this making sense, y'all. Yes, it is. I don't need you to ask some questions right now. He says in, 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 in verse 7, it is not for you to know the times of the season which the Father have put in his own power, but he shall receive power. Yes. I don't need you to be concerned about what's in, what, 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 what did he say? He said, I, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father have put in his own power. So in other words, in other words, what he's saying is, when it concerns Israel, you can't, you don't have a hand in this. You truly don't have a hand in this. There's really, okay, now, when the world, so watch this, when the world asks, okay, well, what can we do when it comes to Russia and Ukraine? We can't do anything but pray. But when you pray, you must understand, you're not necessarily asking God to do anything other than what he's already put in motion. You're asking him for his will to be done. So in other words, we need to stop praying, God, what do we need to do about Russia and Ukraine? We need to pray, God, do what you need to do concerning Russia and Ukraine. That need to be the prayer. Because it's not in your power, according to the text. It's not in your power. But verse 8, he said, but he shall receive power. So this ain't the power I need to worry about. But I am going to give you power. Verse 7, no, verse 8, but he shall receive, are y'all ready? Yeah. But he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You shall receive power after which the Holy Ghost, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. 
he shall be what? Witness. With what? It's not what we just talked about earlier. Yeah. Ye shall be what? Witness unto me. Ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both is you know what that sound like? That sound like the working of evangelists. Now you see why Holy Ghost told me what he told me? This is the time to teach. The, 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 the proof of teach is in verse 1, where he said to begin both to do and teach. Now the proof of evangelism is verse 8. But you shall receive power after that group. the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto both, and excuse me, and you shall be witnesses, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in And when he had spoken these things while they beheld. 
beheld, he was taken up. So those words of the intent of the Holy Ghost, that was Jesus' last words. All right. That was his last words. We lied. I said it again. Whenever we talk about the seven last sayings of Christ, don't say. We better stop this tradition and make sure we're hearing from the Spirit of God. You want to know the last sayings of Christ? Look in Acts chapter 1. That was his last sayings. And some may say, oh, well, we call it last sayings of Jesus. Oh, we call it last sayings of Christ. Well, guess what? This is him in his final form. Mm -hmm. Why do I say his final form? Because he did not become Christ until he died, or until after he died. Mm -hmm. Then he became Christ. Amen. So when we talk about all oh, the last chains of Christ, this is he. This, that's his last chains. Now, if we say the last chains of Jesus, then we're correct. Because those were his words before he died. You know what I'm saying? But when, but if we're talking about the last sayings of Christ, it is not before he died. We are wrong as two left shoes. And, and, and again, I'm not condemning us. We, that's how we taught it, but now it's time to correct it. The last sayings of Christ was in Acts chapter 1. Verse 9, and when he had spoken these things while they had held him, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Now he went up, just like Elijah. When Elijah went up, he went up. But of course, Elijah, he went in the chariot. Jesus, or Christ, he just was taken up. He was raptured up. And verse 10, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Uh -huh. But in the book of Revelation, as I mentioned earlier, there are going to be two witnesses. Amen. You see why it's important to tie all this stuff together? We got to understand before we talk about we're going to go and pray. You, you can't pray nothing but his word. That's prayer. Come in agreement with his word. Two witnesses. So watch this. This is why a lot of times why even on Wednesday nights as we talk about our Revelation series not to go into it, but on Wednesday nights this is why you always hear me say that in order to understand, and I need you to now hear it again, in order to understand what's going on in Revelation, you must be up to date with previous scripture, Amen. with Old Testament, strongly, and New Testament. Yes, that's right. There are going to be two witnesses. Do you realize now why I said that the book of Acts is not yet concluded? Now, I'm not going to suggest that these two witnesses are the same that are going to come in our day. That's not what I'm suggesting. But I wouldn't be surprised if they're the same two people. But we'll move forward. We'll move forward. Verse 11, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, these are the two men of white apparel. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Yes, Jesus just went up, but why are you standing here just watching him? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as he as he has seen him go into heaven. He is letting them know, or he's reminding them, he's reminding them of his coming. Don't, don't be so caught up on he left. But I need you to look forward to his return. Yes. Yeah. Verse 12. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Ol Olive, which is from Jerusalem a seventh day's journey. And verse 13. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Jesus, James, and James, and John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bar 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 Bartholomew, 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 and 
Matthew, James the son of Al 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 Fires, or Al Force, and Simon Zela. I got to get these names down pat. And Judas, the brother of James. These last verse. These all continue with one accord in what? In what? Do you read it with me? In what? In what? Can y'all hear me? In what? In prayer. And supplication. Do you remember the definition now? In prayer. Thank you. In prayer. And so they use the same words in the definition. Supplication. That's the same word. From the definition, see why we got the Greek, the Greek and the Hebrew, and some people say, "Oh well, all that don't matter." No, that's what you mean, the enemy. He don't want you to know what the Bible actually says. Right. Jesus Christ, and, and even if it is true, and I, I, I'm, I'm gonna just keep it hundred. I believe that there are certain parts of the Bible that are taken out. But we, how are we gonna be worried about the parts that are taken out if we ain't to the point to where we are ready to have a full understanding of what we do have access to? Look at somebody and say, stop being a lazy Christian. Or better yet, not Christian, because Christian is a term that they used to insult us. So I need to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, stop being a lazy believer. Because I, even myself, I would like to, ch I'm changing my language instead of calling us Christians, we're believers. You got to do your history on that. Christians, Christians is a term to degrade us. I ain't got time to get off and all that. Amen. Glory to God. I'm talking about God. I know I'm way past my time. I'm getting out of the way. I'm a co-pastor. But I just wanted to, to just mention something. Praise the Lord. If you can, with this understanding, trying to get in our head now, it's like we had a mental block when it came to the real knowledge of of. Uh, verse 8, what ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you all, yes. and ye shall be my witnesses. You see what I'm saying? Amen. And we're trying to get Christians saved over and over just by being through the week. And by Sunday, then I lost the Holy Spirit. So, how can we be witness? You know, we got we got to continue. Yeah. We got to continue in this prayer, so so we can be be indulged yeah. with power from on high. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And 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 not just, just say. Divided, but we got to come together in unity mm -hmm. on Amen. one accord. Yes. This word is letting us know here in supplication, in prayer, on one accord, mm -hmm. in agreement. You see? Amen. When you see, Christ, what Christ is trying to teach us through the teacher. This is wisdom getting out of the way if we don't have to understand. Yeah. We feel like, oh, uh, 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 I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand. But if you don't come to Bible study, you don't come to prayer, you're not, you're not going to get that understanding what you think prayer is all about. Amen. You, you, there's a need for those to pray in a place in behalf of those children out there on drugs and stuff like that, and we come together and not stay home or come to touch and agree with somebody on a prayer, somebody concerned about your growth. That's right. That's it. You, uh, amen? Yeah. Concerned about your growth and, 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 and come together and pray. And instead of you know, the blind trying to lead the blind. Yeah. That's right. And they're all falling into the ditch. We've got to come into the, the knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. Jesus 
said in the six, uh, 16, I think it's in the St. John, he said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. When he, the truth is come in your heart, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. Yeah, that's it. And you won't be speaking of yourself. What I mean, I mean, I ain't got time. You, uh, you this and that. Uh -uh. You speak what the truth says. You speak, you speak the truth. Before, and I will even say this again. Or oh, I'll say this. Because while co pastor was speaking, and thank you, co pastor, but while co pastor was speaking, the Holy Spirit even gave me this statement. For those of us who say, oh, well, I'm a prayer warrior, or so and so is a prayer warrior. Or, oh, I'm an intercessor, or so and so is an intercessor. If you don't know any Bible, what are you praying? Amen. If you don't know the terms and conditions of the contract, which is his will, how can you agree with his prayer? But you don't know the terms. See, this was wrong with some of us. Because just like in the natural, we don't read the terms and conditions, which is the Bible. Yeah. We just want to scroll all the way down and say, I, sign, I agree. Yeah. Sign, I, well, whatever. I know what I, I need. Watch this and hear it prophetically. I just need what's coming to me. Right. I don't care about what could come with it. But if you see it, that's not faith. No. Oh. Amen. Faith, is faith is not what you see. Amen. It's what you believe. Amen. Amen. We're leaving. Last one I want to make here. 14. Verse 14. We are way over our time, but it's all right. Verse 14, because we're teaching on some things that uh, next Friday, next go around, we're not going back over this. Now, the Holy Ghost tells us to be cool, but that's not my intent. Amen. But if you realize I said that's not my intent, but the Holy Ghost say it different, then we will. But I don't plan on going back over this. Amen. So whenever we come in here and we spend most of the time in here on a Friday night just praying, oh, we we, we, we best be with it. Right. Because we're now dealing with the teaching of prayer. Yeah. So there's no excuse as to why we can't pray. Hello. So those of you who say, oh, I'm a member at Prayer 7, I'm going to say it. For those who say, I'm a member or whatever, and after tonight, you don't know how to pray? Amen. Amen. 14, we're getting out of here. Verse 14. These all continue with one accord. Wait a minute. One accord in prayer. That's what I'm saying. So in other words, we are praying. In other words, what the text is actually saying is that we are praying his word and not words. Amen. Or in other words, I'll say like this, that we are praying his will and not wills. Two points I want to make. 
for people who say, oh, well, you know, we are, you know, that still believe, uh, you know, women pastors and, oh, well, they shouldn't be or whatever. Who well, guess what? It wasn't just men in the upper room. Hello. No, I, I'm making certain points because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming against tradition. It wasn't just men in the upper room. There were women. With the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. So Mary, so Jesus' mother was there. So in other words, I don't care how much you think you know God. <laughs> don't you ever get confused to think that you can never stand in a place of prayer. Oh, but me and God got a close minute relationship. He's my friend, but he's still God. Don't you ever forget who he is, because he don't mind reminding you. And, here's my last point, and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. And with his brother. So, that's a man with some brothers in there, brother. Right. So, let me say this. Right. For people who believe or whatnot that, oh, well, prayer warriors are usually women. And that's what we see in this day. Usually we see the ones who are in prayer are usually the women. But there's Sheila and the whole rabbi. There's something about when men come together and pray. There's something about, so guess what? Guess what? No, 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 no. Guess. So whenever it comes to these nights like this, and we come in here and we pray, I'm not just looking for, we're not just looking for the women to come. Brothers, children, Bring them all. Come on into this prayer. Right. Let's pray his will. This is why on these nights, in other words, let's pray his will. In other words, let's pray his word. That's why on these nights, it's not enough to just come in here and pray. But we need to read some kind of term and condition to now go to the bottom of the page to sign and agree to. You got to have something to agree with. His will. That's the best way to say it. His will. His will. His will. His will. His will. That's it. That was it. That was all I was reading tonight. Verse 14. That was where I stopped. Hallelujah. So we can't act like, oh, well, 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 well. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank God for the will. Well, one of us praying in the household. No. Y'all need to come together. I don't say that. This is going to be very clear. It was a man in the Bible that says, that's going to be in my house. He spoke for the whole house.
Amen. We get ready to close. We can stand. And there's nothing else to say, but I will. This will be my last statement here. But we got to have some kind of endurance, y'all. I understand that there are things going on in the world and the pressures have become more intensified. But at the end of the day, you got to fight the good fight of faith. Listen, now I ain't trying to compare what I got going on to anybody else because I could talk about what I got going on but somebody else got something going on even worse. But now I may be going off of I, this, this ain't no pity, but probably going off maybe about five, six hours of sleep. Had to work an eight hour shift a day, went in that ten, got off at six. Yeah, eight hours, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six. Eight hour shift, yeah. I worked eight hour shift, got off work. Had to get in the place, got in the place for God to hear what he wanted, the rest he wanted me to go tonight. And he already showed me before I got off work. But then he led me to write down certain things with him once I got here. And then now come, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, in other words, it wasn't easy. It, it was a little bit of a struggle. Amen. I, 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 and I got to be up in the morning and go to work tomorrow morning. But the thing is, you have to be serious. This ain't no form of passion. So I don't care if nobody come. I don't care if nobody comes on live on Facebook and YouTube. I would love for them to. I would love to, to, to enjoy being around other people who are concerned about their soul salvation. But if nobody else, I will. See, watch this. You see how I'm using the verb to my father? Abide in me and I in you and let every branch that bear fruit. Don't let every branch that bear not fruit that it will go away. His will. I should sound like my father. I should have the spirit of God, which I believe that's going to be where we pick up next week. Because some may have saw the topic or saw the topic for this entire series and said, what does it mean, wind of the spirit? What does all that mean? We'll break all that down. We'll break all that down. We ain't gonna leave you in the, in, in, in the dark. Yeah. Amen, but again, let's stand. Anybody have anything? Father in Jesus, they cut the back door seat. Father in Jesus' name, God, we thank you all tonight. God, we bless your name. Thank you, Lord, for, for, for this gathering, for this meeting. God, Hamando, Shilamando, Radaman, Seka, Hanadabandesia. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we thank you. God, we praise you for igniting prayer in us, for igniting the knowledge of your word in us. In the name of Jesus, and God, we thank you, Lord, for covering us. Even as we prepare to go into the rest of this weekend, God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that your will is being done in our lives. And God, we'll be ever so careful to give your name all the glory, honor, and praise that is through your name. And this is some Jesus name. Pray everybody say. Amen. Amen. If you, don't did you turn us off yet? If you uh, would desire a soul, you would desire a soul tonight. Uh, as always, give an information for Facebook. It is on Facebook. Uh, you should find it in the images or whatnot. Um, and for YouTube, it is in the description. If you would like to sow towards what we are doing, if you would like to sow, if you say that, oh well, uh, uh, you know, I would love to be there or whatnot, and, and, and I just want to push the the, the the vision, I want to push the assignment, I want to push the teaching, I want to push what is going on at eleven twenty Terry Drive at Praise Chapel Nine of Denver Drive. I want to push it. We 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 gonna tell you how you can push it. You can pray for us, and you can believe God that God will continue to allow His will be done in our life. But you can also sow because it costs money. Can I just say that for a second? It costs money to do what we do. Hallelujah. So the thing is, we know God will provide. But the thing is, we will also open up the opportunity for man to be a blessing. Why did I say that? Because the Bible says for us to give, it should be given back 
unto us. Praise the Lord. I'm going to say it together. One and over. Shall men. That's the Bible. Shall men give into your bosom. So again on tonight, we thank you for joining us. If you like the soul, you can sow. Uh, besides that, we will be here tomorrow at 12. Is that still there? Tomorrow at 12, we'll be here at noon for our Sabbath service. And then Sunday morning, we'll be here at 1030 for prayer. And we will start Sunday school immediately at 11 a.m. Amen. Amen. So again, God bless you. Help me smile upon you. God bless you.